Hello, BookTube. I'm here to do a tag. I had hoped that I'd hoped to have had done it yesterday, uh, but it's one that I was tagged in at the end of January, and I didn't get around to doing it. Uh, James Holder tagged me in his uh, original tag of the Miss um, Marple book tag on January 25th, and that was the day, the morning here in the UK. I had a heart attack, so I was out of the picture for a while. And then subsequently got, uh, uh, at the end of that week, I got uh, COVID uh, while I was in the hospital, recovering from a heart attack. So I finally get around to do it. Uh, I'm going to uh, be referring to uh, my phone here for a number of reasons uh, for, the, for the prompts as well as I've got some uh, props, uh, but I don't have everything and my memory is horrid, so I've looked up sort of dates for some things and we'll see how it goes but as i say uh it's it's this covid and the brain fog and some days last couple of days uh it's been quite bad so uh but i'll give it a try and see how it goes uh the first one is the murder at the vicarage a book about or set in a small town or village and what i've chose is galliput eyes by elizabeth or sorry elizabeth huxley uh, and this was uh, published in 1976. It's a it's a Wilshire Diary, as, as it says, the subtitle. Yeah, 1976 by Weidenfeld and Nicholson. And it's her little diary for a year, from April 74 uh, to uh, basically the beginning of April 75. Um, and uh, it's just, you know, a little everyday things that she's doing in her cottage, gardening, uh, about neighbors, about the village. Uh, she does um, historical research uh, for the for, um, into into sort of characters or the village. So I, and I really enjoy it. It's like small entries, but it's really it's really a fun read. Uh, she's uh, a uh, author of a lot of books. Um, she's done even uh, some bi biography of Livingston. I think that was the first probably biography that I read about Livingston. Um, uh, David Livingston, that is, uh, and Flame Trees of Thika, uh, is another one. It's about her growing up as a child, uh, in, uh, on a coffee plantation in Kenya, uh, as well as a sequel to it, and just a lot of other, a lot of other novels and other nonfiction. Fabulous writer. Number two, The Body in the Library, a book with a pivotal scene set in the library now i'm going uh with um clifford simak for this uh enchanted pilgrimage and i'm just gonna get can't remember the um date um find here uh it's set it's seventies um sorry I don't have the exact date it's a sort of fantasy slash um science fiction book it's set uh modern well modern day at the time in the seventies but it's still medieval times and the uh, main character finds a manuscript in a library. And they go on a quest uh, through the dark lands. It has your, 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 you know, your usual fare of goblins, uh, harpies, uh, uh, you know, the usual sort of folklorish creatures in the darkness. And uh, it's just, but it's just it's fabulous, fabulously written. Uh, I really really enjoy it. Um, well, I, I enjoy all his all his uh, his books. So, uh, let's see here. Uh, number three, The Moving Finger, a book in which protagonist is trolled, harassed, subject to a rumor campaign, or falsely accused. Uh, I chose uh, John Buchan's 39 Steps, uh, basically because I've been reading novels to, to film, so that came to mind. Uh, 1935 film, um, uh, 
by um, Hitchcock, uh, Robert Donut, and um, Madeline Carroll. A uh, fabulous film based on, on, on the book that was... Oh, yeah. Sorry, I didn't pull up the date of that. I, I'd forgotten that one, the date of that. Uh, but it's basically, he's he's it's a thriller. There's spies. Uh, it's, I think it's set before the First World War. Uh, and he's, he's, um, he's a cute, or the police believe that he'd murdered somebody and that, that was found dead in his apartment. Uh, so where are we on? One, two, three, four. Uh, number four, a murder is announced. A book in which there is a sympathetic depiction of a Marxist or equivalent. Now, the one I've chose, it's here, it's at the bottom of the pile, so I, I just, I couldn't get to it. Um, it's the ragged trousered philanthropist. Um, I've taken um, that uh, because uh, the main character. It's written by uh, Robert Noonan uh, under the pseudonym uh, Robert Tressel. Uh, it was posthumously published, I think, in 1914. And uh, he's a painter. Uh, he paints houses and other people, and he uh, he's a socialist definitely because he 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 believes in sort of that you know they're they're being exploited by the rich and they're sort of well, worker slaves basically to make the rich richer and them poor hence the name um they're ragged trousers and they're philanthropists for the rich um and it's that sort of a very basic basic understanding of it but you know there's marxist theory that he throws in there a little bit about uh, economy and everything so that was about the closest that I could get. Uh, next one, I think we're at number five now. They Do It With Me is a book in which performance plays a major role. Now this goes, again, to uh, something that was adapted into a film, a silent film. Um, it's called um, The House of, or just House of Fear by Wadsworth Camp. It was published in 1916. And it's basically set in the theater, and there's a play going on, and uh, the, uh, one of the main characters gets murdered on the stage in front of everybody. And then the, subsequently the theater is closed, but then there's a uh, later, years later, there is uh, the, the, the cast gets together to, you know, to, to reenact um, the play. And... Uh, it's yeah, and it was made into a 1924 film by Paul Lenny called, and I've got the wrong DVD uh, Blu-ray here. This is Waxworks, but it is Paul Lenny. But it's called uh, the Last Warning. Uh, was that uh, was the uh, film? So, um, no, I think it was nine. That's 1924. 1927, I think it was. Uh, was the film, and the author of the the novel that was written was Wadsworth Camp. I mentioned, he's the father of Madeline de Engel, uh, which is a science fiction writer. She wrote Wrinkle in Time and a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, so that was just a, a bit of an aside there. Um, next one is, I'm not sure what number I've lost count of the numbers now. A uh, Pocket Full of Rye, a book based upon or inspired by a nursery rhyme, fairy tale, myth, uh, or other work of fiction. Now, I've gone to um, the... Oh, what's the proper full title of this? Sorry. Um, the Strange Affair of spring Jack. And it's a steampunk novel by Mark Hodder. It's the first novel in the Burton Swinburne series, uh, 2009-2010. Uh, it's, it's set in Victorian time, well, with, with uh, Sir Richard Francis Burton as the main character and uh, Charles, um, no, Algernon Charles Swinburne as his sidekick, the uh, poet. And it's based on sort of the urban myth and stories that started to circulate in early Victorian times of a mysterious person or creature uh, that could jump so high and then disappear when he jumped. Um, 
and it sort of was described that he might have springs on his heels, so hence spring-heeled Jack. Uh, and throughout sort of early Victorian times, there there was various sightings in London and then uh, throughout England, and the Penny Dreadfuls sort of latched onto this and started writing fictional stories. And then Mark Hodder has used it into the sort of time travel uh, alternate history um, uh, story, which is it's a whole fabulous series, uh, about six or seven, uh, I think, novels. Um, I haven't read them all. I've read, I think, four. I think I've read four of them, uh, but they're fantastic. Uh, let's see what's next. 450 from Paddington. A book in which more in which more than two suitors pursue the main protagonist. Now I chose Dracula by Bram Stoker. 1898 was it? 1898? What's the memory on that? All it's really showing is all the uh, Oxford printings. Uh, I think it's 1898. Um, but anyway, um, so you got Dracula, uh, Mina Harker, uh, and you got Dracula after her, um, a suitor. You've got Jonathan Harker, and then you've got Quincy the American. So there you go. Uh, the Mirror Cracked from Side to Side, a book about a changing world. And that I chose The Death of Grass by John Christopher. Uh, this was... I can't see the date on here properly. All I got is the first published by Michael Joseph, but I can't see the date. Yeah, sorry. Uh, but yeah, it's it's a dystopian novel where there's a virus that has killed all grass and it's sort of quickly moving across England and the characters, have, uh, the main protagonist and his family sort of leave London and sort of fight their way to, um, I think it was a relative farm in, um, in Yorkshire somewhere, I believe it is. Uh, it's, it's a long time since I've read it, but I, I picked it up last year and I definitely want to reread this. Uh, let's see here. A Caribbean uh, Mystery. A book about or set in uh, the Caribbean. And what I chose was Our Man in Havana by uh, Graham Greene. Um... Can I see the date on this one? In 1958. At least that was big enough and clear. Um, it's set in Havana, uh, Cuba. And the main character is he's a vacuum cleaner salesman on hard times. And then he gets approached to sort of by Secret or British Secret Service to sort of... Um, I think it's British Secret Service. Yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, to, to, you know, do some spying. So he falsifies reports and he gets paid money. Uh, he gets worried when these, some of these false reports become true. Um, so yeah, and it was a, there's a fabulous movie made of it as well with, with, um, uh, Alec, Alec Guinness. Yes, Alec Guinness. Um, at Bertram's Hotel. A book about artifice. Now, I took that to be sort of trickery or um, pretending to be something else. And what I chose was uh, a French sort of series of, of novels called Fantomas. First, uh, first appeared in 1911 under the title Fantomas and uh, by Marcel Alain and Pierre Silvestri. It's about a master criminal who um, is sort of similar in some ways to, to Moriarty because he's a master criminal. 
uh, and nobody knows who he is, uh, but he he can disguise himself as anyone and pass himself off as anyone. That's the idea. And uh, there was a whole series. I don't know how many to say here. Um, I think there's... Uh, yeah, there's like 30-some, uh, but there's like their panty... Uh, uh, pastiches, I think. Uh, there was like 30, I think, the original ones. They're all written very quickly. Uh, like, it started in 1911, and uh, 1913 was the 30th one. So, yeah, they just spewed them out. Uh, I've read a few, and I've really enjoyed them. And there was a French serial that was made, I think, in 1914 uh, of it as well. So, uh, but those are fun. Uh, let's get back to the questions. A book featuring uh, a quest. Now, I've chose Hyperion by Dan Simmons, uh, published in 1989. Uh, it's a science fiction novel, um, and it's some pilgrims that are going on uh, a quest to uh, time tombs to sort of get answers to, uh, they each have their own um, sort of questions and things they need to find out. Um, as, and, and they're traveling to Hyperion, uh, the planet, and then the Time Tombs is, is the location on the planet. And, uh, it's, it's loosely sort of based on, um, or the structure is Canterbury Tales, uh, which is kind of interesting, which I could have used that for the other, uh, question as well, but, uh, but yeah, no, that's that's a good one. I won't go into too much detail, uh, plot summary wise there. Um, Sleeping Murder. This is the last one here. A book in which the past haunts the present. Now, I chose uh, Foundation by uh, Isaac Asimov because um, the main character Harry Seldon is creating a he's, he's, well he has set up. Uh, uh, sort of his um, cycle history, which predicts the future. So, and he sort of knows that the the civilization, the universe, is going to go into decline, like a dark ages. So he's going to help uh, shorten that period because he knows what's going to happen and how to do it. So it's the past that's haunting the future and uh, sort of the present and uh, and lead guiding it uh, through. So there's my. Uh, Miss Marple tag, and thanks, uh, James, for creating the tag and uh, tagging me into it. And I do apologize. I've taken so long to get this done, and um, I hope it was sort of coherent. As I said, uh, I've I've still got this COVID. I think it's long-term COVID with this brain fog, and uh, there's times that I can't even think of words. I know what's there, but I just can't grasp them out of my brain. And concentration too is is difficult, but I've been. Uh, it's 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 up and down most days. It's the same as the breathing. Um, some days the breathing is is good. Some days um, it's not so good. But anyway, uh, I'll be back. I got another. I'll be back tomorrow. I think uh, Thursday with um, another film. I'll be doing uh, to serve with love, uh, the book to film, and then back on Friday with uh, Friday reads. So take care, BookTube, and if you're in the UK here, keep warm.